So um, we're going to switch topics now, and this is uh, going to be intentionally repetitive uh, and a little bit shorter. So we're going to talk about transient synovitis of the hip, and this is the main differential uh, diagnosis uh, uh, member that you need to distinguish from uh, septic arthritis as uh, when you have someone who comes in with a limp. So this is hip pain due to inflammation of the synovium in the hip. It's most commonly in 48-year-old kids, and it's the most common cause of hip pain in kids. Um, Risk, risk factors, well, it's tough to know because we don't really know what causes this. However, most commonly it follows a viral infection. Uh, it can occasionally follow a uh, strep uh, infection, so it would be a post-strep uh, type uh, situation. Um, but most commonly it's had a recent upper respiratory infection, and this is the most common way it's tested as well. We don't really know what causes it. It's nonspecific inflammation, hypertrophy of the synovial lining, uh, but generally this is quite benign. It's unlike aseptic arthritis where you need to take it to the operating room. They usually get markedly improved in 24 to 48 hours with treatment of NSAIDs basically alone, and generally this, the symptoms are completely gone by a week. So here's a five-year-old boy. He's had three days of limping and painful range of motion. He, there's no mention here whether um, that he's not able to bear weight. In fact, they say he's able to bear weight. Um, he has a limp, though, and um, he has a CRP that is elevated. Again, look at the normal range here, so it's actually normal, sorry. White blood cell count is nine, so that's normal, and a set rate that's normal. So what most likely preceded the onset of symptoms? So again, all of his Coker criteria are essentially negative. And so um, he basically is most likely to have an, a respiratory illness or some sort of viral illness that preceded this. And this is the most common presentation for someone in the clinic that has a toxic synovitis. The pain can be in the groin or the hip, and true hip pain is often in the groin. Um, and basically these kids do not have mechanical symptoms, so it doesn't suggest that they have something going on with their cartilage in any way. They do have a limp, and that's very common and they can have a fairly significant limp in the office. Uh, the key is that they do not have constitutional symptoms if they're going to have transient synovitis. And again, look for this recent infection history and make sure that they have not had recent trauma. Um, basically, if you have a transient synovitis, they're going to have no real fever. They may have insidious onset of groin and thigh pain, and it usually improves during the day. However, um, it can uh, turn into a limp later in the day. Uh, again, preceding infection, very common. Um, the hip, again, is going to present just like a septic hip. So if they have fluid in their, in their joint, it's going to be flexed, abducts, and abducted, and externally rotated. Um, however, these kids, unlike a septic arthritis, do not have a toxic appearance. And when you move their joint, it does not have the same degree of pain that someone has a septic arthritis uh, has. Uh, they will have restriction of their motion, uh, as you would expect. You can get x-rays in these kids. Uh, we generally do, just to look for any trauma or other causes. They will, again, potentially have widening of the hip joint, particularly if they have a lot of fluid in there. Um, and again, you can see that um, this um, uh, hip here on the uh, uh, left-hand side is sort of uh, out to the side, meaning that there's a fair bit of joint fluid in that space. Ultrasound, again, is indicated based on whether or not you're concerned about a septic arthritis. So if you have more of those Coker criteria present, you're going to be more likely to get an ultrasound. If, you're, if you do not, you're going to assume that this is a transient incidivitis, potentially treat them uh, with NSAIDs. Um, the problem is an ultrasound is going to show fluid on both, uh, and there is real no way to distinguish between them and ultrasound, and so it's a common clinical uh, decision-making to have both the fluid and the ultrasound, uh, how many Coker criteria you have, and then you uh, sort of couple this with a joint aspiration if your index is sufficient for infection is high. Um, MRI is really only used if you think there's something else going on, so if they, you think they have a muscle infection or osteomyelitis, however, it's usually not necessary in, in general. If you think you have transient synovitis, you do not need to do this. Lab values should be normal. Uh, again, because these are all nonspecific, they may be slightly elevated, uh, but in general, they're normal. And again, you want to use these Coker criteria uh, to determine whether your uh, septic or what your risk of septic arthritis is. So, the fewer the Coker criteria, the more likely it is transient synovitis. Um, and the most important factor is uh, getting that CRP, particularly if the symptoms are relatively acute. So, this is the same uh, three papers we talked about before. So, we'll go through them pretty quickly. But again. Uh, the Coker paper, which looks at these four uh, different factors uh, and your risk of uh, infection based on those, that CRP and refusal to bear weight in addition to temperature are very important. And again, CRP and weight-bearing status potentially the most important as far as di diagnosing aseptic uh, arthritis. So treatment for transient synovitis is uh, basically observation and conservative treatment. If you have a low clinical suspicion of septic arthritis, you generally give these kids NSAIDs uh, with close follow-up. Uh, I often sort of look at how reliable I think the family is as well, um, but basically NSAIDs will solve the problem in about 24 to 48 hours. Um, kids, if they have this, do well. Uh, they basically get better very quickly. Basically, within a week, it's almost gone. Um, 
uh, operative treatment is almost is, is really not really appropriate here unless you have a septic arthritis so this sort of sort of overlaps with the previous uh, section the only issue is that once in a while you will get an aspirate that is a little bit high that will lead you to uh, wash it out just because a septic arthritis can be so damaging um, you'll often err on the side of washing it out but sometimes everything will end up being culture negative and their ultimate diagnosis will be transient cystivitis but these are generally challenging or questionable clinical pictures where the labs are not very clear and from a test taking perspective uh, that will not uh, be the, the case um, and again so IND really only if you have a septic hip and again it's a surgical emergency if you do complications you can get perthes and hip dysplasia if you have this these are all both rare uh, but definitely described be sure to subscribe for more content and follow us on Facebook and Twitter at OrthoBullets.